Hi and welcome to Geeks for Geeks. Today we would be discussing the problem named as shortest distance in a binary grid. So in this problem you are given a grid like structure, you are given a source and a destination and you need to travel from source to destination and you need to tell the minimum time in which it was. Now the first thing is how would you suppose you already given a source and a destination. So how would you travel? What are the rules you need to follow using travel? The rule is very simple. The rule is that you can go right, left, up and down. This is the very first rule. And then in one unit of time, you can just move to one cell adjacent to it. Adjacent means left, right, up and down. And then the next thing is you need to be the adjacent. Suppose you are at this. So the next one you are trying to travel should be one. Okay. Like you are trying to travel up. It should be one. One. It should be one. Like one means that yes, you can take up this path. Zero means that it is not available. It is blocked. Okay. So now let us see. So we are given the source and the destination here for simplicity i have marked source with a blue color and a destination with the red color so if you observe that in the first iteration i would go down and the next iteration i would go down in the third iteration i would go here so total three seconds where or three unit was required to reach here so now what is the time required to reach here so see, I can try to reach here like this, like this, like this, like this, like this. But after this point, I can't make an entry to this because only left, right, up and down is allowed. So even if I go here, then I go here, I can't go here. Even if I go from here, I can't go here. So it can be clearly seen that yes, I can traverse, but it needs to be one. Suppose a particular destination is covered by zero from all the four sides, then you can't visit it. Okay, simple enough. So here it is kind of like the same scenario. Like see, here only two sides are remaining because this side and this side is out of scope. And this side and this side is zero. That is why we can't visit it. That is why the output to this is minus one. So now, what is the solution to this? The solution to this is absolutely very easy. If you are familiar with the idea of BFS, okay, how BFS? Because you can see that what we would try to do is we would try to propagate, okay, we would try to propagate from a particular point and we would radiate energy. So it can be told, like, suppose there has been a radiation bomb in your locality. So it would, okay, I hope it doesn't have go this scenario i really pray that you don't have the scenario in real but let's suppose this so suppose this bomb expands it per kilometer like this like this so we can in the same way we would use bfs so how it can be so in the first unit of time this 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 would be done after that we would propagate again so this would now propagate because see, suppose there is a coronavirus in the whole country. So suppose my brother affects me. So now I would also start affecting. So in the same manner, this one would also start affecting. So this one would now start visiting this one. This one would visit all the other four direction. So only this one is remaining. So now this one, this one is remaining. All the other four is visited. Next from white, we would try to visit in all the four. So we would visit this, we would visit this and this one is our destination. So in the third unit time, we have reached it. So it is kind of like this. Let's suppose this is the source. In the first unit time, we would visit everyone like here. Now everyone would try to visit like this. Now again, after this point, again, everyone from here would try to visit like this okay and then again from this small scenario again we would have like this 
okay this is how you can have it so see this is so if you're not really familiar with the idea of bfs consider knowing it because this is bfs on grid so telling you the whole sense of bfs and then coming back at this point won't be sensible enough because you need to first understand BFS on graph and then you should move to grids. Grid is level two of BFS. Fair enough. Now let us move back. So what we would do here is the normal uh, BFS only. So we would push the source. We would push the source and then the, from the source, we would move to its adjacent. And if the adjacents are not visited, we would push the adjacents. And this all would be done with the help of a queue, as you all know from the BFS. So this is very easy. We would push the dimensions, coordinates of the source, and then we would visit its adjacent. Now the query is that in a graph, we are given that, yes, this has a connection to this. But how would we find neighbors of the current node? Okay, like suppose I would just tell you this. Suppose this is 0, 0, this is 0, 1, this is 0, 2, this is 1, 0, this is 1, 1, this is 1, 2, this is 2, 0, this is 2, 1, and this is 2, 2. So from this, I want to know the adjacents of mine. So I can go here, I can go here, I can go here, I can go here. So if you observe that if you're going on the top, x coordinate decreases. If you're going on the right hand side y coordinate increases and if you're going on the bottom side x coordinate increases and if you're going on this side y coordinate decreases so what we can do is if we can have something like this this is x coordinate and the y coordinate okay 0 0 1 minus 1 okay 1 minus 1 0 0 so if you observe that if we add the corresponding if we add the corresponding values to the current index we would be able to visit in all the four direction how because suppose we are at the index one one let's add the corresponding index as this so we would need to add one zero that would be two one see two one is the index we are visiting let's add this index so one one plus zero one which is equals to one two one two is this one which is the index we need to visit. So this would allow us to visit all the four directions. So if you're not familiar with this, consider using the conventional if statement to visit in all the four direction, but using the X and Y coordinates, that is 0, 0, 1, minus 1, minus 1, and 1, minus 1, 0, 0, using this would make the implementation a lot cleaner and a lot easy and a lot easier to debug. Okay, so this is how we would do. And the next thing what I want to say is, so if you are at this index, then you can see that you can't visit here, can't visit here. So if we are visiting a current node, we need to check if it is within the boundary or not. So checking within the boundary or not is very easy thing. We would just check if it is greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to size or not. And then we would move forward with the same idea. So let us move to the implementation and you would have a better understanding of this. So these two things has already been discussed with you, like the valid one. We would check if it is greater than or equal to zero and less than the size or not. Okay. And this one is the size of the array. And this we are using a distance vector to calculate the distance. Okay. So initially all the values is initialized with int max so that int max represents that this value is not calculated up till now. And this X and Y D X and Y allows us to facilitate the visit of all the four direction. Okay. Then we need a queue of pair of int and int, and we would name it with Q and then we would push the source. Okay. So Q dot push as it is already in vector. So we don't need to do anything. We would go down and then we would say the distance to the source. Suppose from the source and destination are same So that in that scenario, we would say that yes, in that scenario, we would have the distance as zero. Okay. Then we would start the iteration like we do in the conventional BFS while the queue is not empty. Okay. First, we would find 
in the front of the queue. So we would say auto current is equal to queue dot front. We would take the top element, okay, and after the front is taken, we would pop it, okay. Now we would have current x is equal to current dot first, and then current y is equal to current dot second, okay. Now we would say that if the current value equals to equals to the destination that means we are able to reach the destination then we would return the distance of current x and current y simple suppose we have reached the destination why to move more we would just return it from that position only else if this is not the scenario we would visit in all the four direction for int i is equals to zero i is less than four and i plus plus here in this loop we would add the corresponding values so we would say int next x equals to current x plus dx of i and we would say next y is equals to current y plus dy of i okay so dx and dy now we would say if the index we are trying to visit is valid first if it is within the boundary or not next x and next y okay and then we have m and then m and after if it is valid then we need to check if it is equal to one or not that means it is allowed to visit or not okay so we would say g of next x and g of next y if it is valid and distance of next x and next y equal to equal to the value int max. Okay. And then we would say q dot push next x comma next y okay and then we would say distance of next x comma next y is equal to distance of current x comma current y plus one okay after all this point we will return minus one suppose we are not able to reach the destination then in that scenario we would say it is minus one okay so if it is valid and it is equal to one that means we can visit it and the distance is not calculated this means this then we would push this index and we would mark the distance plus one because the distance to reach at this point plus the distance to reach plus one the distance to reach to the next point we'll just compile and run and see how many errors are we making okay very simple error to that can we come back okay let's see okay we are getting a correct output for the sample test case now let us try to submit this and see okay we got an ac now let us talk about the time complexity the time complexity is very easy we don't need to really see the code why because bfs visits each node exactly once okay so the time complexity is equal to the number of nodes we have and the number of nodes is n cross m so the time complexity is m cross m which is given and let's talk about the space complexity so in the worst scenario we need to store each of all the nodes in the queue so we can say that the number of nodes is n cross m that is space complexity is n cross m again so that's it for today if you liked the video and you found it useful consider liking the video and commenting on the video so that the reach of this video could be increased thank you and have a nice day